the ancient ruins of Giza, perhaps the most incredible of them all, and possibly the clearest displays of academic conspiracy, with much of the most puzzling of areas all but closed off, away from public view. An attempt to stifle controversial questions, which inevitably arise from such baffling ancient wonders. However, this attempt to obscure the greatest aspects of ancient Giza just fans the flames of curiosity. For when one realizes that much of ancient Egypt is being actively covered up, so-called officials avoid any obligation to explain the methodology. Behind many constructions found on the plateau, structures and relics, which to this day escape any logical explanation. Once one accepts this reality, one begins to wonder what unspoken motivation there could be to ardently hide these sites' true characteristics. We have in the past covered many areas of ancient Giza which cannot be explained. Many people are aware of the issues surrounding the construction of the pyramids and the largely exposed void in modern understandings. However, this conundrum is but one among a smorgasbord of highly intriguing yet no less mystifying features hidden in plain sight all over the plateau. The basalt floor, which still contains volumes of tool marks, evident of high-precision, high-rotation ancient power tools. The gigantic megalithic blocks, each sunk flat, level with the base of the pyramids, which, although walked over by millions, have been largely overlooked by all. Some of these blocks, forming the immediate foundations of the pyramids, are similar in size to the pregnant woman of Baalbek, which is estimated to weigh some 1,000 tons. Additionally, all of these features, according to mainstream teachings, were created by the ancient Egyptians, a civilization we claim merely re-inhabited the site, like many others around the world. It is a fitting hypothesis, which if indeed the case, then all said tasks were undertaken and masterfully accomplished with nothing more than a set of soft copper tools. A clearly illogical hypothesis, disproven in many ways, one of which is by the main pink Aswan granite relics still in existence all over Egypt, which were all simply impossible to have created with just copper chisels, and our next artifact of interest is of no exception. This imposing altar was found at the west end of a passage, just outside the northern wall of the temple of King Amenemhat I. Originally, it is presumed that the altar once stood in the open court of the temple, with its roughly shaped lower part suggesting that it was sunk into the ground. A rectangular libation basin is carved into the top of the altar, as well as representations in flat relief of an offering mat containing two libation basins and three loaves of bread, the middle one incised with the king's throne, with the name Horus added, with the phrase, may he be given life forever, uncannily similar to long live the king, but I digress. At the center of the altar's front side, the incised birth name of the king Amenemhat, with rows of approaching fertility figures who are designated by inscriptions as personifications of gnomes, regional governorates of northern and southern Egypt. It is undoubtedly an incredible ancient artifact, one carved with such precision and artistic accuracy, and upon some of the hardest stone on earth, to suggest this was achieved with soft chisels is to us absurd. Who made the altar of Amenemhat? How did they carve it? An exquisite ancient relic which is, like much of ancient Egypt, highly compelling.